Hello, hello everyone. Guess what we're gonna make today? Today we're gonna make a dough and what we're gonna use is mashed potatoes. We're gonna put mashed potatoes in our dough. So we're gonna start off. There we go. We're gonna start off with adding some warm water and some yeast. Be a good boy for mommy. This is, I'm using a quick, a quick rise. That's what I'm teaching boy. I'm using a quick rise, so it's gonna make my life easier. Here we go, I'm putting one cup of warm water. And to this, we're gonna start adding some flour. Now because this is a quick rise, this yeast is gonna start going and it's going to just simply um, rise in no time at all. So there we go. Now I'm just gonna bring my mixer close to me. And we're gonna start adding potatoes. And we're gonna add to start off, here we go, that's a whole cup of mashed potatoes. Doesn't have to be precise, guys. And that's really gonna give it a nice texture. Here is the rest. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of sweetness. I am gonna add a little bit of maple. There we go. And we're gonna start mixing this. I'm gonna use first my I'm gonna use first I'm gonna use my cake batter let me just lift this up to show you um, I'm gonna use this uh, the batter mixer first because this way will break all the potatoes up I did mash my potatoes ahead of time and then once we start adding the flour slowly we're gonna start we're gonna change this to a hook there we go and we're going to start this on, let me see, do you get to see a bit of it at least? Not the best place to do this, right? I've got it on low and now I'm going to start adding some olive oil. And I have got, I'd say about two, three tablespoon of olive oil and I'm going to mix half whole wheat and half uh, unbleached flour and we're going to start off with one cup of unbleached flour that's about a cup And here is one cup of whole wheat. Okay, I just want to lift this up for a second and change it to my hook. go so we've got one cup you know what I might do two cups of a whole wheat this way I don't have to go in my storage room to this I'm gonna put a heaping tablespoon of gluten what that does is gonna make it a stretchier dough because the flour we're using is not bread flour, and that's what we want, is bread flour. Let me just empty out my flour jar here. Okay, I'm going to put my hook. Now, when you're making dough, or when you're making pizza, you want your dough to be soft. If the dough is too hard, to get the nicest pizza okay so here's one more cup so I have uh, one 
unbleached and two cups of um, two cups of whole wheat flour. I've got my hook in. Checking my dough. Yeah, I'm just going to put a drop of milk in there. A little extra oil. You got to have some oil when you're making pizza dough, guys. Here we go. And we're going to start mixing this again. Okay. When you're making a softer dough, you're going to find the inside of your bowl a little messier, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. See if you can scrape as much as you can out of it. But you do want a nice sticky dough. Then we're going to put this in the, well, I'm going to put it in my oven because I have a proof there. But if you don't, just put on, uh, heat up your oven just a little bit. If, my oven has uh, bread proofing, but if you uh, don't have that as an option with your oven, what you could do is just heat up your oven on a very low temperature. And when you feel that heat, it's a nice heat, it's not that you're cooking anything, shut off your oven and then you can use that to help proof your bread or your pizza dough. And what the potato does, it really makes, it gives the dough or your bread a nice, nice texture. Okay. There we go. Just put a little bit on top. And we're going to put this in the oven and we're going to let it rise. Now, you could have this rice twice. You could, uh, if you really want a fluffy uh, dough, what you could do is make your dough today and let it rise and punch it down, let it rise again. You could let it rise overnight. You do want to cover with a plastic bag, so if it over rises, it stays, it stays in the bag and not all over your stove. But I am not going to make it rise that many times. I'm just going to let it rise once, and then we're going to make a nice pizza with this. By the way, you notice I didn't put any um, salt whatsoever uh, in my dough. My potatoes were salted when I was salting them. But I did not put any salt in my dough because um, yeast works better with some sugar rather than salt. I will add salt to my pizza later on, but I don't put it in my dough. Okay, so now what are we doing? We're making a potato pizza. So what goes great with potatoes? I would say uh, almost like a, like a sausage meat. So we're going to make a ground sausage type meat to put on top of our potato crust 
and potato pizza. It's going to be so delicious. So bear with me. I'm going to take out my pan and I'm going to show you what I'm putting in for ingredients for the meat. Okay, so we're going to add some olive oil. Now we got to take some ingredients and start flavoring it so it has a nice rich uh, meaty taste. So to this we're going to add some TVP. Not sure if you know what that is but it's something that you could buy very easy uh, to and very good to have on hand because if you don't have any um, say tan made uh, in your freezer uh, or in your refrigerator you would have to start making say tan from scratch or you would have to go out and buy sausage meat and then you crumble that but I'm not crazy about the sausage meats you buy except for one which I really love and that's the apple sage but for now I don't have any apple sage so I am not going to go crazy and try and make a batch of meat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with adding some TDP, which is basically textured vegetable protein. I have um, Bob's Red Mill and those are gluten free and they are no GMOs. So we're going to start with one, maybe one and a half cups of this. And if you have leftover meat, it's still not a problem because you just put it aside and you could always make a wrap with it. Now to this, I'm going to add some, um, believe it or not, some oatmeal. Now you've seen some of my recipes where I use oatmeal to make meat. So basically we're doing the same thing. I'm using about a half a cup of oatmeal. Easy so far, guys. We've got olive oil. We'll probably need more olive oil. There we go. We're going to chop up an onion. There we go. Just push that aside. My onions are small, so I'm going to need more than just one of these little onions. Where is my good knife? Now, uh, you can cube it or you can leave it um, sliced. That's really up to you how you want to do it. So I'm going to cube some and I'm going to leave some as slices for it later on. But to make this mixture, I will cube it. Now I love apple sage. So we're going to make like an apple sage sausage meat. I should have had this prepared, right? And once I have my meat done and cooked, all I have to do is put it aside and wait for the dough so I can put all my ingredients on top of my pizza and remember like I said if you have way too much meat left over uh, because you don't want to cake this on the pizza either right you want to crumble it and put it here and there on the pizza but if you have way too much meat because you went a little nuts like I do half the time uh, just put in a little Tupperware and if you're making a little quesadilla, you can use that. If you're making a wrap, you've got some of that lunch meat. So you could actually make some lunch meat with it. There we go. So we're going to cut another small onion. This will give me a nice size um, onion. So play it by ear, guys. I'm using two smallish onions. Now, if you want to use exactly what I use in my apple sage sausage, you can follow that recipe, but just do your nice meat. Okay, so that's that. We're just going to quickly give this a mix. Okay, to this we're going to add a little bit of coffee and I'm using an instant coffee, about one and a half teaspoons of instant coffee. That will give you that nice, nice rich flavor. We're going to put some black pepper.
We're going to get some sage. There we go. I'd say about a teaspoon of sage. I'm going to grate some apple. You don't want this overly sweet, so we're going to start off with half an apple and then. Actually, I think I could put a whole apple in here. Yeah. It's a smallish apple. Apple. I'm going to need extra fat for sure because sausage meat is a little fatty, right? Okay. Just a little rosemary, about a half a teaspoon to start off with. I've got chili oil, but if you don't have chili oil, uh, you you could put plain uh, crushed chilies. So I'm going to start off with just a little bit of chili and chili oil. Remember, you can always add some crushed chili flakes if you don't have this. But this is really easy to make, guys. If you ever get a chance and you have some hot peppers, you find some hot peppers at the grocery store, it's a must. Just pick it up. Okay, so now we have some of this uh, leftover potato, and we will add this just a little for now, and then we'll do a little more later. But what this does, it just helps everything stick together like as if you had a little bit of pork meat. Or pork fat. Now, if you don't want to use TVP and you want to use, um, maybe you would like to use some uh, ground up tofu, you could use that. It really is up to you guys. And what's a little bit of pork sausage without a little bit of fennel? Just a little bit, guys. You don't want to put a lot of that because it will overpower it. We need some crushed garlic. Now you guys can use, if you want, a lot of people say, I don't have fresh garlic, can I use powdered? Yes, you can use powdered. The only thing with powdered is that it tastes powdered. If you want something good, you got to use the real stuff. So if you can, try and get yourself some garlic, fresh garlic rather than using the powder but like i said if that's all you have go ahead and use use some of the oops, some of the powdered if you don't have the fresh you want this to taste like italian sausage guys where's my garlic press i've already lost it okay let me use this one i lost the one that my daughter made me buy. I have no idea where it went. Okay. One. I'm doing three garlic cloves, but you know what? If you can, more is even better. Whoops. Can you smell it already? It smells like craziness. This is like crazy. It's giving me a flashback of my father and my mother making sausage. Now the best part about all of this is you could already taste it because you're not going to die of salmonella or E. coli. So just taste it. Mm. 
Okay, my father used to also put orange, orange zest in his sausage meat. Next best thing is, I'm going to use my tangerine. I could even cut this up by hand. Maybe I'll do that with the, the other one. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to start cooking this up and see where it takes me. I need salt for sure. And I'm going to use now salt again to taste, guys. You want this fatty, so be generous with the oil. And if you're watching your calories and you don't want to put that much oil, well then leave it out. But, okay? I'm going to start browning this up. And I'm going to show you what it looks like once I've browned it and if there's anything else I want to throw in there. My God. This is so good. I got mushroom powder. That's what I need. One tablespoon of mushroom powder to start off with. Okay, got it? I'm going to start cooking it up. My God, it tastes fantastic. I could eat it like that. Maybe some extra coffee. Another half a teaspoon of coffee. Coffee is very umami. What coffee does, it brings a lot of richness. You won't even taste the coffee in the dish. But it adds a lot of richness to your dish. I might even put extra garlic. I might do that right now. So I have three. Add one more. One more clove of garlic. So that is four that I'm adding. Okay, where is the smell of vision when you want it? Okay, so here we go. I started to brown it. I didn't put any liquid whatsoever. Uh, it's basically cooking uh, with a little bit of potato. I'm going to add the rest of the potato now. And if you don't have any, uh, any leftover mash when you're making this, I always make a little extra. But if you don't have any uh, leftover mash, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, and to this, I'm going to squeeze that little bit of tangerine where I took the skin from. And what this is going to do is give it that fatty texture that you usually find in pork meat. Or in sausage when you're cooking sausage. But we are making a pork type of meat. We're not making a beef type. So there is the rest of my potato. How much did I use? Let's say about a half a cup. And now you need something to moisten up that uh, that TVP that I use. So I'm going to squeeze right over this so I could take whatever coffee bit is. There we go. So I'm using the leftover tangerine, not to waste it, it's going straight into my meat and now I'm going to add a little bit of water. Now you don't want this to be soupy guys, you want it to be um, tender like as if it would be pork meat. Okay, one second. Now if you want you could also add a little bit of wine, it's really up to you. I'm just using whatever tangerine I had left over mmm so good this 
just a little extra water. You want to you want that water to swell up that the TVP that you used and make it nice and tender like as if it is a sausage meat. Okay, back on the burner. And that's almost done. Erica, do you want to try it? That smells so good that I made the uh, pork sausage meat. Oh my you want to try it? I'm so hungry. Okay, but this is for the pizza. Oh my God. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to continue cooking that down a bit and get those niblets nice and tender as if it would be a pork meat. Add extra fat if you have to because that'll give you that fatty texture that usually sausage meat has and then we'll put that pizza together okay here we go guys this is done look at that looks and tastes delicious am I gonna say it tastes like pork meat uh, it tastes exactly how my parents used to season their pork sausage and how it sticks that potato makes it feel like it's fatty and it's a perfect, perfect texture to put on top of pizza. Now remember, if you have leftover, which I'm sure I'm going to have leftover, don't be afraid of it. Put it in a Tupperware and then use it either in a quesadilla or some kind of wrap and you have dinner. And this is nice even if you make it uh, without the pizza. Just make it and serve it to your family. You can mix beans in here. There's a lot of things you could do. So, hope you like this little recipe and how easy it is to be able to make some uh, vegan meats to put on pizza or anything else you like. So, I'll see you in a bit after we stretch out that dough. Delicious. You want to try again, Eric? Tell me what you think. Don't burn yourself. Mm. What does it smell like? It smells like sausage. I'm sure again. Hmm? It's very, mm. very good. Oh my god. I gotta stop eating it. Otherwise, we're not gonna have any for the pizza. So, what I'm gonna also do is we're gonna crush, we're gonna hand crush them. These are already pitted olives. I could put them through a little Nutri Bullet, which makes my life a lot easier. Sometimes I just like doing things the long way. It just gives you more pleasure when you eat the food. Okay, we'll start off with that. And to that, we're going to add some salt. Here we go. Okay, I'm liking this new garlic press I have. It was the cheapest one to buy. And it seems to do the job. My daughter likes the one that you rock. I mean, that's pretty cool too. But when you're in a hurry, I don't care if it doesn't rock. Here we go. Need a knife. So we're just gonna make a very fast, roughly chopped tapenade. Salt. Now I need some olive oil. I've got the garlic. I don't know where's my olive oil. And we're just going to crush it. And this is going to go also on the pizza. Now you can also put capers if you want in this. I'm going to do a caper free. But you can put capers if you want. There you go. I just need a little bit of orange rinds. I'll be back. It's funny when I make dishes like this, 
those smells I associate from my mom's cooking and my father's cooking. Taste. Oh my god. So good. So so good. So this is perfect and it'll be ready for when I put that pizza together, guys. We are back. There is my beautiful potato dough. Isn't it beautiful? It's risen more than half. So I'm okay with it, but if you want, again, you can let it rise, punch it down, let it rise. But because we're in a pinch for dinner, I am only letting it rise once. There we go. We're gonna lay down some flour. And this is what I mean about when you have a soft bill. You see how easy that is to stretch this? There's no struggles whatsoever. You can simply flip that over and stretch a little more. At this point, I could start stretching it right on top of my parchment paper. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that. Because I have my stone in the oven and the only way for me to transfer this would be using parchment and it's going to be a lot easier for me to put it right onto um, my big wooden pizza stick. So I'll be right back. Now the thing is, if your stone is not hot enough, your pizza is going to stick on that stone. So, to make sure that doesn't happen to me, what I do is I take a little bit of parchment. I'm just going to trim it off the side. I could even there, flip it under. There we go. I'm going to flour my paper. Put my dough right on top of that. There we go. Now let me just get myself organized. Yeah. Okay. If my pizza, if my pizza stone isn't hot enough, your pizza is gonna stick on that stone. So what you can do is do what I'm doing here. We put it right into the oven, and um, after it's cooked, like for about a good ten minutes, uh, all you have to do is slip out the paper and your pizza will be right onto the stone. This makes life easier. Trust me, trial and error. First time I made it on a stone, duh, I forgot to, I forgot to do something very important, which was heat up the stone. And let me tell you something, that was a disaster because my pizza was stuck on there for good. Okay, so now we're just gonna add a little bit of oil right on top of this. Uh, remember, we're making a pizza that you don't need to put cheese on top. This is a very rustic Italian pizza. So we're gonna put a little bit of, um, since we like the heat, I'm gonna use some hot oil on this, but you can use pesto if you want, or parsley pesto. But you wanna put uh, a little drizzle right on the pizza. So I'm just using a brush and I'm just lightly giving this just a little coat. You know the saying, the horse of a different color? Well, this is a pizza of a different color. Okay, on top of this, we're going to do our... Tapenade. 
And this gives it that nice, salty, almost like a sardine, almost like a sardine uh, taste to it. Now you can spread it or you can just simply put little dribs and dabs here and there. This is my husband's dinner. Then for Erica, I don't know if I'm going to do it in a cast iron, but she's going to have the same thing, but we're going to do a little different for her. We're going to top it with a cream. Okay, so we've got our tapenade. Now, of course, we're going to put that beautiful meat we made. There we go. Oh, I wish you could smell this, guys. You hear my daughter? She's a busy bee today. She's wrapping her Christmas gifts. She's way ahead of me. See? All the meat I have left over, but that's not going to get wasted at all. That's going to be somebody's lunch, that's for sure. Okay. Done. We're going to put some red onions. Very simple, guys. There's nothing hard to do about this pizza. Everything could be done last minute, as you can tell. Erica, now's a good time to wrap my gift because I've got my back to you. You laugh? <laughs> what do you say, guys? Okay, and now we're going to put some potatoes on top of this. Now, if you saw my Kasori uh, video, uh, you know I made that potato salad, but this is the recipe. I mean, the potato salad is delicious all on its own. This is how you make the most delicious pizza, potato pizza, that you've ever eaten. And this pizza does not need any type of cheese on top. If you would want to put some kind of cheese, I would say uh, vegan blue cheese would, look, would be nice with this. But I would not put anything but this on top. Pizza number one. Isn't she beautiful? And for my hubby, of course, he likes his heat. And this is going to go in a 425, 450, depends on your oven, guys. And that's going to go in until your crust is nice and golden because everything else is cooked on here, guys. Okay. In the oven it goes. Okay, this is going to be Erica's. We're going to put some olive oil on this. Maybe too much dough. And we're going to stretch this out. Yeah. Okay. Brush it on. Okay. 
a little bit of tapenade. Beautiful, some meat. And that was easier to make this guys. Some onion. And some potato salad. And use your hands, guys. That's what God gave me to you for. I hate when people say, oh, I get disgusted when you use your hands. Perfect. There we go. And this is going in the oven. Erica's pizza. I'm gonna try and do this without burning myself. Now look at that. Tell me, isn't that the most beautiful thing you've seen or you've ever seen? So I am going to do this is a little hot. I'm just gonna let it cool off for two minutes. Let me see. Oh perfect, look at that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now to this, I have, which is gonna wilt nicely on top. I'm gonna put a little bit of this beautiful, beautiful salad. And it adds a nice little tang to the pizza. There we go. And then, of course, what do we have here, guys? Some beautiful, beautiful sauce. And that's how simple it is to make this beautiful pizza with potatoes and flour. And it's a softer dough. It's not as firm the dough. It's a nice soft dough. But you can make all kinds of things with this, with this recipe. You can make bread. There's uh, desserts you can make. Very, very simple. So I hope you like this video, guys. And if you give it a try, come back. Let me know how you like it. And guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in the next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.